God put something in him that he couldn't quit. I remember a time that he had me at his house and he preached there. And, and he kept going. And God, God blessed him. And God gave him a place now to be and, and to feel and do what he needs to do. And I'm glad though I'm a part of that. Me and my family, he has helped us through the years and he sure has told us the Word of God. If you get offended by the Word of God, you got a problem. Man of God, stand and preach the Word of God. If something happens to you, you got a problem. You ought to check it. You ought to be thankful. Yes, sir. The world that we live in today, let me tell you this real quick. For the world we live in today, we better thank God that we got a man that still preaches the truth. And I thank you. Because I'm going to be shortly gone. And if the world stands any further, you see the generation behind us. It's not going to have many to hear the Word of God anymore. More to get them here, more to let them listen to the old man of God preach. And let us do our part. I just say again, thank you. I thank God for joining us together. And I mean that. To have a man that can help us do life. More to be, more to be excited about what we have here. I do thank you again, preacher. And I hope I hope we hear when he comes. I hope he's preaching somewhere and I'm a listening and he just takes us out of here. I hope that's the way we go. But if not, but if not, I know I have heard the Word of God in my lifetime. And I thank y'all. Sister Andrea, thank her for being there with him. Look, it takes him too. It could have got messed up. That's right. I will face life the way it is now. You don't have to be this way to be a preacher. That's false. You got people that's divorced and married, divorced. I better get off that. I'm just telling the truth. I have heard the truth all my life, and I thank God. I'm gonna shut up. Thank God for what we have. But I want to. I want to say this about my man of God. I'm I'm thankful for a man of God that'll that'll preach the truth, but he'll also answer his phone, and he'll be. He, there was times that the time difference in Uganda. It went, but when I called his phone, he answered. And I've seen him do it working with him. I've seen him do it with, with a lot of y'all. I've seen him take time and, and answer the phone and be a pastor. Thank you for that. somebody to go and gather the corn. But gathering the corn doesn't get to the meat or the, the kernel that has the sustenance to it. You go into the field, you go into the field and you gather those ears of corn and that corn is covered by a husk. It's just not a husk, but there's also silk. Alright? So, what he does all through the week, what we see what we see on a Sunday morning and a Sunday evening of the preacher coming in and taking the pulpit and taking the Bible and preaching 45 minutes to an hour, we think that's the only work that he's done. But in all actuality, what he's had to do all week is he's had to dig through the husk. He's had to dig through the husk so that he can get down to the kernels. But if he give us like this, how many of y'all want to eat that? There's some mining that goes on. There's some refining that goes on. 
to get that corn down to where there's absolutely nothing left, then just, just the kernels, just the kernels on the cob. And it seems easy enough, doesn't it? No, no. I'll be honest with you. We live in a lazy society. We live in a lazy society. Most of us would just rather go to the Walmart or the Rainies and buy corn on the cob and frozen stuff. Because it's easy. I see Brother Tim put something on Facebook the other day, preacher. We live in a society of copy and paste preachers. And I'm thankful today that we don't have a copy and paste preacher. We don't have a copy and paste preacher. We got one who goes through the week. Goes through the week. And he does everything that he can to get enough. That one ear corn ain't going to do much. He's got a family to feed. The family of God. Here's what we don't realize a lot of times. He's responsible for more than just him and Miss Angela. Amen. He has the welfare and the well-being of every one of our families at his very heart every moment of the day. If God taught me anything in the pastorate, he taught me that God puts the love in a man's heart for people that are not his people, and they become his people. And he loves them at all times. He's not always happy with them, he's not always happy with the decisions that they make. But nonetheless, in spite of how happy he is with them, how upset he gets with them, he still loves them. So that week after week, he can come back. He can come back with enough so that when it's all said and done, when we leave here, every one of us has had something to spiritually nourish ourselves. It's not an easy task. It gets all over the place. You realize that there's a cleanup after all this. All this silk, it gets everywhere. There's little notes and tidbits in his Bible that are written all over the place. There's little notes and tidbits written all over his desk where he sits and, and weeps and he, he studies and he prays and he asks God, God, give me a word for your people this week because they need nutrients. They need nourishment. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so week after week, every day of every week, hour after hour, he sits in that study getting ready to step the corn. Also that people like you and I can grow into spiritual maturity. A pastor's responsibility is far beyond what we see on the outside. He loves at all times. He is the, he is the man that God has placed within our spiritual well-being. And He does so so that you and I can grow. Almost enough to live in the corn in the All this, all this labor, just for a little bit. But when he steps back and he looks at it, and he looks at the impact that he's made on the lives of God's people, the time, the time that he's invested to pray, to study, to find just the right passage that God has spoke to his heart with so that he can take and feed and nourish God's people. That's what sucking the coin is. But sometimes, Sometimes shucking, shucking's hard. Sometimes it's real hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to chew. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to chew. <laughs> Other times, shucking's soft. <laughs> and real sweet. <laughs> But you know what shucking the corn does sometimes? Sometimes, sometimes shucking will make folks sour. <laughs> sometimes so sour, that they don't 
come back. Will they come back or not?